I'm Nick Roush. He's Adam Luckett. We're in the city of Louisville, which means Kentucky just won a football game. <laughs> it happens every time. Every time Kentucky comes here, they beat the cards. It's just a fact now. It's what we've come to expect. Even when the Cats are a seven and a half point underdog, even when Louisville is a top 10 team, 10 wins, it doesn't matter. Kentucky took care of business today in shocking fashion. It was shocking, Adam Luckett. As smarmy as I want to be right now, it was absolutely shocking. It was a close game in the fourth quarter. Time and time again, Louisville has gotten breaks in that situation throughout the year. You thought Kentucky might fold. They had the Devin Leary arm. It wasn't even an arm punt. He got hit. But it, they basically caught a punt in their own ta territory to tie the game up. And you thought, oh, gosh, Louisville's going to get the breaks here. Kentucky's going to fold again. We've seen this story play out. But Kentucky's offense showed resiliency. They went down. Ray Davis got a nice drive starter. Barry on Brown makes a tough contested catch. And then Davis punches in the game-winning score. Three touchdowns as 20th of the season. A new single-season record. Look at everything that needed to go Kentucky's way. They did it. Despite getting outgained, they got the win here at Don't Call Me Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. I've got to eat some crow. Man. <laughs> I, I did not ever see that kind. I just didn't, man. I thought Kentucky was in a way bad space. I thought things were trending in the wrong direction. We get word that Mark Stoops is talking to Texas A&M um, late in the week and then heading into the game day. But I like that's one for the culture, man. It's one for the culture. Uh, Mark Stoops is going to leave here eventually. It might be soon. We don't know. We can get into all of that. But we are going to miss that guy for the, these games. No matter what's going on in the season, no matter good, bad, uh, losing streak, winning streak, he has his team ready to play and ready to fight and mentally in the game from the start here. And that is worth something here in these rivalry games because, Nick, what I talk about all the time, why these are so – I love them at the end of the season because what it means, it just means more because you go into a long off season. We heard Jeff Brom talk all week. You know, biggest game. It's our Super you know, Bowl. They the wanted to do the opposite of Satterfield. And Mark Stoops in Kentucky said, Mark Scott Satterfield, Jeff Brom, alma mater, hire a G5 coach, whatever you want to do, we're coming in here and we're going to kick your ass. And that is what happened. And that is – and it just – one for the culture, Nick. They go down, they get down 17-7. I felt like the game was over when Louisville goes and yeah, scores. Yeah. Like Ten-minute touchdown drive to start Kentucky's the got a chance to get a goal line stop, and then Louisville punches it in. Mr. Trinity makes a big mistake. They kept kicking it to Barry and Brown. Why would you do that? It makes no sense. Why would you do that? So you don't you don't kick it to Barry and Brown. It's like Devin Hester back there. What yeah. are you doing? So you let Kentucky back in the game there because that really kind of changed everything. I thought it was like, oh, okay, this is a you know serve. It was like felt like a tennis match at that point. Louisville goes and scores again, but Kentucky. Um, Royals Award nominee Ron Inglis' defense kind of fell apart here for Louisville in the second half. You hit two wheel routes in a row, two-play drive, score. Devin Leary was throwing through a dot to Ray Davis on the wheel. And then it's 24-21. You're like, oh, is this – like, this is a game. And then, Nick mm – -hmm. The defense get, delivered. You get in the fourth quarter, and all season Louisville had thrived in these moments, right? And mm -hmm. Kentucky had crumbled. Kentucky is the one that gets the timely takeaways. Kentucky is the one that finishes drives. Kentucky is the one that goes on a two-minute drive, four plays, 85 yards, and scores a touchdown to go up 38-31. It was just Kentucky. They flipped the script today. And I don't think really anyone saw this coming. And for us locally here, Nick, this one is going to matter a lot. Yeah. Like this one is one you well, can dangle and, over Louisville fans. And I don't think we can stress the importance of – how much this game meant to this fan base here at the University of Louisville. That was yes, the largest absolutely. crowd in this stadium's history. It was packed for the first time ever. You couldn't see the logo in the corner of the stadium because the seats were filled. This was their biggest game of the year. I know Notre Dame was a big crowd and that was a big moment and getting to an ACC championship was big, but this was the game they wanted. They are tired of losing to this Kentucky football team. They are sick of it. They are sick of having that held over their heads. And they got to deal with it for another year. They just do. That's five straight. Louisville hasn't won here since 2014 when Devontae Parker just went all off. And this game, as much as we're going to remember the Ray Davis play, as much as we're going to remember the J.J. Weaver fumble recoveries, it really was, for the first time all year, Kentucky playing complimentary football. When one group did something well, everybody followed it up. you got to go back to the first half, right? right? Kentucky or Louisville starts really methodical. It's a 14-play drive. They march down the field. Kentucky responds with a decent drive, and they got to get a sack, and they got to punt it away. You have all three step up. Punt down inside the 10. Quick three and out. 
And then the offense gets the ball back, they go down and respond, and Leary throws a beautiful touchdown pass to Dane Key. And like we saw that time and time again, where when if something bad happened, everybody else picked them up, whether it's the special yes. teams touchdown from team Barry on Brown. That was a full team win, and that's just something that they've not been opportunistic this year. And I know there's plenty of you out there. There's Bunny of us right here that thought that time and time again when bad things happen, it would slip away. And this team, they they actually they 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 finally put their foot down yes. and they showed some resolve and they got a big win, the highest ranked win of Mark Stoops' tenure at the University of Kentucky. I mean, just rewind it a little bit. Louisville's in the college football playoff hunt. Kentucky just knocked them out. Yep. Right? Might have knocked them out of the Orange Bowl now, Nick. Yeah. Because play this out. Louisville's gonna hit see a drop in the rankings. NC State, if they win tonight. They're going to move up a few spots. If Louisville loses to Florida State next week, that could knock them out of the Orange Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like, they could be going to Jacksonville, playing the Gator Bowl. They could be going to the Pop-Tarts Bowl. <laughs> I mean, this is, where, <laughs> this is what just happened today. Oh, Pop-Tarts. This is what oh, just happened today. We need today. all the Pop-Tarts. And it was, it was one Louisville for the fans. culture. It was one for the fan base. And Kentucky just owns this rivalry right now. And Nick... Walking in the stadium, Louisville fans thought they were going to win this game by 20 points. This was their post-game. This is their end of your celebration, yes. right? They were just going to stroll on in. They had a big year, and then they were going to dance house, on Kentucky's house, graves. They ain't dancing on nobody. They were dancing week. on out yeah. of the stadium with a loss. And it is – it's – it's I, I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm stunned. This game, it delivered. It was It's the most exciting game of the year. And it doesn't salvage the season – but it, it does a whole lot to bring people back because things were ugly around here. And we were in very bad places personally, but the whole fan base <laughs> was like, yeah. But the, but the whole fan base was really reeling yes. because – One in five I, in your last six. And I think a lot of it comes down to you, – you mentioned it being for the culture. We thought that culture was gone, mm -hmm. right? It felt like that that was eroding away. And then you had players step up in big moments. Barry Brown played the best game of his season, right? Like we were wondering what the hell that guy was doing yeah. all year. And not only does he have the big return, that catch. It's a hell of a catch. He drops that ball. It might have been a pick. Yeah. I mean, like that, that. So huge plays by him, huge plays by Ray Davis, and then JJ Weaver. I mean, Brad White was in tears in the post game press conference because JJ, he did not have the year he wanted to have. Mark Stoops called him to the office this week and he said, listen, dude, take the weight off your shoulders, hold your head up high. You've done so much for this program. Just go out and finish strong. And what does he do? He gets two fumble recoveries, one of them he forced, yeah. a huge sack. And he's only he's the first ever defensive MVP from Kentucky in this game. A huge game for the Louisville native, and he wanted to send a reminder to all the Cards fans out there that this is my city. This is my city. And he's dominated this game. Had an interception in 2021, had a sack fumble last year that set up a score, kind of flipped that game, and then here today. Um, Nick, we kind of said it all week. Make Jack Plummer beat you. Make him beat you. And they got into a situation where he had to do it, and he failed. Even on that fourth down, if Keaton Wade, I think, if he goes for the, if he goes for the arm, the strip, mm -hmm. instead of reaching for the sack, I think they probably stop him there. So even when they had it set up, like they needed a fourth down scramble drill. Yeah, on score. fourth and five at like the 15 yard line. To bump. me, it was. I think Kentucky's edge in the line of scrimmage is gone now in this game. I think we kind of saw that play out today. But I do think there is still an edge me mentally for Kentucky in this game. And then they just know that they're better than these guys. <laughs> and it's almost the Tennessee series kind of flipped on its head mm -hmm. a little bit. No matter what happens, Kentucky finds a way to win in this game. Like, Nick, we talked about, every game in the stadium, it's kind of like Kentucky's offense just explodes mm -hmm. out of nowhere. 2014, they did that. 2016, they did that. 2018, they scored 50-plus points. 2021, they scored 50-plus points. And now this game, and then in perfect kind of stooch fashion, they scored 38 points and had under 300 yards of offense. <laughs> I mean, like you can't make some of this. You got out gained up. by 100 plus yards. I, I mean, mean, that's just the Iowa Hayden Fry in him. Yeah. And so, it's just a really sweet win. I think for for obviously for Kentucky, I think it builds some momentum going into the offseason. That would have been a bad taste in that team's mouth to lose to South Carolina and Louisville back to back like that. And now it makes you forget about some of the stuff that yeah. happened. You it, know, big picture, there's still I think. You know some worries, and then we don't know. Like we don't know what Snoop's thing is with a And we're gonna have to play the waiting game on that. Yeah. But just a one that I think people were, are going to savor here for a long time, and it's a game you talk about. Like you, you tell you 
talk about to your kids. Oh, yeah. When we played Louisville back in 2023, they were – no, ten and one or ten and one, ace, playing the ACC championship. We're having this bad season, and we went in there and beat their ass. It's it's funny because uh, that's how you make college football fans. Yeah. That's how you get people to come back. We, we were we were having this conversation two weeks ago. It's like, man, I just got a feeling they're going to lose one. They shouldn't in South Carolina, and then win one to end the year against Louisville. And that's kind of how yeah, Mark that's Stoops. Seven and five, the that's, seven that, five. that's how Mark Stoops. That's your typical Mark Stoops season. You lose a game you shouldn't. You win one you shouldn't, and then you end seven and five. Probably going to end up in Charlotte. Will Stoops be there? I I know there's a lot of people that scoff at his name being thrown around the Texas A&M job. That's that's a very real thing. Thing that's happening that we're going to be monitoring over the next 24 hours. We don't know what's going to happen, but don't just laugh it off like, uh, oh, they're just trying to get a raise. Like, if, there's, there's, there's something there. So we're going to keep a close eye on it, but for now, we can relish in the celebrations. Stoops, what was he? He was banging on something with a locker yeah, and a chair. Yeah, he was going wild. I mean, wild I might do that at Roosters tonight if we're going to be honest. <laughs> it, was, uh, it might be me here. In about Ray four Davis hours. gave the cleats off his feet to some fan in the stands. The L's were going down everywhere. Ray Davis, he was, after every touchdown, he was looking for Jack Harlow. He finally found him after the third one and threw those L's down right in his face and told him to go back to the recording studio. He's got to get back in the lab. That's what Jack Harlow does. He shows up to a little Kentucky game, he takes a big fat L, and man, I they did it, like it. Again, this is why this game needs to be on this date. Kentucky just ruined Louisville's best season. <laughs> I mean, just ruined it. Stuck their face, kicked them in the stomach, and stuck their face in the mud and just rubbed it in. And Nick for Jeff Brom, will he ever have a year like this again? It's gonna be really gonna be hard tough. to have a year like this, and they had a chance to like they're they, they would be making the case for the college football playoff all week if they would have beat Florida State next week. Yeah. Now they have no case. Now they just gotta, you know, shrug and try to get off the mat. And this is the first time under Brom where they've really, I think, been gut punched. You know, they've had a, so much go right for them this year and for Kentucky to be the one to come in here. And I, I really can't understate this. Like they really thought, I think all Kentucky fans saw it. They really thought that they were just going to come in here and it was going to be like a crowning moment mm -hmm. for them. And for Kentucky to Kings come in Castle. and do that and to beat them how they've beaten teams all season long. In the fourth quarter, Kentucky was the one that made the plays. Kentucky got the timely turnovers. Kentucky got the big explosive plays late. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's it doesn't get much sweeter than that man it was a sweet victory one that we're going to be relishing for a while we've got all season to talk about it and all season to remind all the loved ones in your life that cheer for the cardinal birds the cats have won five straight in the governor's cup that thing's staying in lexington for a long time